to the Skyfoot channel today with a new project with the second best urban farming insect that I know. Number one, you probably know, I think Samia Rizzini is this urban farming insect for our western uh, temperate regions where there is snow in the winter, it's cold, but we have Brunus Lauro Cerasus and Ligustrum vulgare to feed them all through the winter. So there is a second tropical species that I think is very good for our urban farming experiment with edible insect. It's Anterina suraca. You probably remember if you go back in the playlist, you will see another uh, longer video about Anterina suraca and the low tech um, breeding and rearing uh, uh, sessions that they uh, developed in Madagascar, where the um, bullseye moss, as it's called, is also endemic. I have another 60 eggs from a friend in Switzerland here in this box, and um, they just came out of the eggs three days ago. So um, I presented them La Prunus Lauro Terrasus. A lot of people say it's not good to start with the L1 stage Anterina Suraca with Brunus Lauro Terrasus, but if the leaves are not too hard and uh, you keep it wet all the time, that is no problem. Also for the very little caterpillars that you can see here on the leaves on a black ground, they have these yellowish uh, dots. So they are really tiny now. If you compare it with a centimeter, you can see they are three, four millimeters long when they come out of the eggs. And now they are, some of them already are approaching the mold to the L2 stage. Anterina suraca is a fast growing moss caterpillar. In Madagascar, it's uh, finished the whole cycle uh, in about a month. So if you have high temperatures, not too high, around 26 would be probably the optimum. You can have um, more than 10 generations a year. And one of the other uh, extremely positive things about Anterina Suraca is that it is polyphagic. So it eats a lot of different plants, also plants that are dangerous and poisonous for humans, like for example this Brunus Lauro Terrasus that I um, have from my uh, garden. So what I do today, I just change the leaves. As you can see here, there are, are a lot of these fresh uh, fecal pellets of the larvae, so I have to clean it a little bit, change the leaf material of Brunus Lauro Terrasus. As you can see here, I used younger and softer leaves of the plant, of course there are also very big and leathery and hard uh, leaves of Brunus Lauro Cerasus, so that was a good start for them. I don't see any caterpillars that have died or not uh, closed from the eggs. So yes, so I just take out the whole thing. You see I have a paper on the bottom of this box, why? Because this is easy to keep it uh, humidity high and I will use that again. I just put here a, a, a paper and that I need on, only for the first two stages. Afterwards the caterpillars are not so sensible anymore against drier surroundings. So I will use this paper only for, this, for the first two stages. I have also seen that the flowers of Brunus Lauro Terrasus, they are eaten by them. If you have a look here, it's a flower and you, you can see probably that they ate some of these flowers from this little stem here and you see also one larva sitting here. So probably they also like the flowers of this Brunus Lauro Terrasus to eat, so that's why I just put some more into my cage. Um, and then, of course, I have to 
to see that I change the leaves every two to three days because that's the the average uh, the average time you should not forget to change the, the leaves. Now I have a lot of these Prunus laurels also so I give them a lot of material. The, one of the problems with Anterina Surocco is that when they come out from the egg they just wander around. For the first 24 hours you do not see them eating anything. They just go away from the place they have been born. And if you do not have a covered box like this probably you cannot find them anymore in your room the next day. So pay attention for the if you have the eggs that you keep them in a closed box at least two days after they they hatch so that you don't lose too many of them that wander around. That's probably one of the techniques of nature to avoid that the whole population is destroyed if a bird or um, an amphibian or a, or a, or a lizard uh, sees the young larva and eats them all. And then I, I just take the parts with the caterpillar that I give back, not the old leaves of course, I try to avoid putting in too many, too much of the old leaves, so I just cut here. Also here you see they have everywhere they have eaten from these leaves. So I just give this back to the new plant that I offer. They have dispersed. Some of the caterpillars, like for example some Yaritini, they eat in groups and little herds they go around but not on Terino Suraco they seem to be more separated and distributed. So that's why you have to pay attention that they don't run away if you do not cover uh, them, at least for the first uh, days after the hatching. So I think I had 60 eggs. It's a lady from Switzerland who is um, who is cultivating Onterino Surocco. Also there are a lot of people in Europe that do this and it's a nice hobby for the people to see what a beautiful moss is coming out of the silk cocoons that they make and the silk of course is used in uh, Madagascar also to produce uh, yeah, silk and it's a very highly valued uh, silk material from a wild moss. It's not a, a very old domestication on Terino Suraco compared with Somia Riccini or with Bombix Mora. On Terino Suraco is a, probably a young domestication not even 100 years old and one of the reasons why this is a very positive factor for the people there is that they not only can grow kind of a cash crop with the silk of the caterpillars but they also grow their own food because Anterino Suraco is an edible uh, insect and is mostly consumed in the form of the pupa when they produce, have produced the cocoon, they take out the pupa and cook and eat and relish it. Yes, and um, it's a mixed form of silk production and food production. Uh, at the moment in Madagascar, it's a very uh, successful project with Anterino Suraco and it's also of course uh, a good thing to do that because they are very easy to breed. That's also one of the reasons why a lot of people in Europe breed on Terino Suraco. That you can see here in this box. So you have to be of course, you have to very carefully look through the older plant material like here. I forgot one of these nice little caterpillars. And then for the next stage 
I prepare a bigger box uh, where I have a living plant, a living potted plant of Prunus laurocerasus. I will try that next time, so stay tuned here in that Sky Food channel about edible insects and join me when I post my next video about Onterino Suroka, the famous bullseye moss from Madagascar. Thanks for watching.